Hey, what's up, y'all? Happy trade day. Happy Wednesday. Like I always say, I hope that your day is off to a great start, whether that means you got up and meditated, you worked out, whatever makes you feel good, I hope that's what you did because I want the rest of your day to be amazing. You feel me? Nothing but good energy, good vibes, just good shit. You feel me? But yeah. So with that being said, I want to thank all of you who have subscribed, liked, shared, you know, disliked, you know, um, gave me some type of feedback about what I've been doing on my YouTube channel. I really appreciate all the feedback because it only makes me better. So it's only up from here. So, you know, anything that you have to share, you know, you want to say to me, I'm open to it. Okay. Thank you again. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So today is going to be interesting. Um, I decided to talk a little more about what it was like coming out to my family, um, as being a black gay male, you know, growing up in Pensacola, Florida, um, what it was like, someone asked me to talk a little bit more about that. So I want to say that whatever I share I don't mean any harm or any um, anything negative against my family, um, but it's my truth, okay? I just want to say I don't mean any harm, um, but it is my truth. So that's my only intent is to share my truth in hopes that it would help someone else, you know, that may have a child that's coming up, you know, and they may see that they may um, be gay, you know, maybe bi, you know, maybe a little different, shall I say, um, to help them handle the situation a little better. Um, Cause could things have been better? Yes, but I think my family did the best that they could. So where do I start? I shared a little bit about uh, my story in some of my previous videos, but um, I just say that I've always known that I was gay, or I knew that I had I was attracted to the same sex back in um, even as as a little boy. I think I said in one of my previous videos, my grandmother caught me on the side of a house, you know, with a young man. I think we couldn't have been no more than 10 or something like that. I don't know. I know we were very young. Um, showing, show, playing show and tell, you know, on the side of the house. We got called. I got my butt beat by my grandmother and a few other people. Um, but that I knew back then something was different. You know, I had girlfriends and, you know, throughout school, you know, I would date females as soon as they started talking about sex you know it was just time to exit you know what I mean so I've always known so when I growing up I would always hear like my grandfather I would hear him say stuff like my mom bought me a my buddy doll I don't know if y'all remember those my buddy, my buddy, wherever I go, you're gonna go, my buddy. <laughs> I had one of those dolls. It was like a, it was like a little baby. It wasn't like a doll doll. It was like, I guess it was a doll. Anyway, but hopefully y'all look it up. It was called My Buddy. Anyway, we were living in Detroit, Michigan. And I remember my mom, my mom bought me one. I know she didn't think anything of it. Um, bought me on my buddy doll. You know, the, the the boys supposed to walk around with their little my buddy doll. That's my buddy. You know, he's supposed to go everywhere with me. Um, but I remember my grandfather saying something along the lines of why would my mama? He was talking to my mom, and why would she be buying me a doll? She don't need no. I don't remember his exact terms, exact words that he used, but he didn't need. A grandson walking around with a doll like a little sissy or something like that he said and that stuck out in my head because I liked 
playing with Barbie dolls with my cousins. I liked it. I liked the comb, the, the, the Barbie's hair and all that kind of stuff. I liked all that kind of stuff. But when I would hear my grandfather or other family members refer to boys playing with dolls as being gay, it would hit home for me because I was like, it's wrong. You know, they that's what they would preach. You know, when like current day, like, you know, I would let my daughter play with whatever she wants to play with. Let her figure out what she likes, dislikes, all that type of stuff. But back then, it wasn't like that. You just did not do it. So I would find myself trying to sneak to play with baby dolls and stuff, but I wouldn't let, especially any of my uncles or grandfather, any, none of the males, I would let them see me do that because you'll be labeled as a punk, a sissy or whatever. So I would hear my aunt, my mom's sister, I would hear her say stuff like, you know, I was very popular in school, so especially middle school, and I had a bunch of female friends, you know, and they all wanted to, you know, do the do. You feel me? I didn't. I would let them see it. You know, I tried a few things, but it just it just didn't do nothing for me. You know, I never went all the way, if that makes sense. But they were always, you know, they had my number. My mom got me my own line, you know, separate from the main house phone because she got sick of all the girls calling. So I remember my aunt coming in town and she was like, I don't know if she was talking to me. I think she was because she said, oh my God, I'm so glad to see all these girls calling this house because I sure thought she was going to be old sissy. And I was like, oh my God. I am. I mean, that's what they call gay people. So I was like, I am in my head. I was like, wow. So this is what I grew up with. There's like all these little comments that would be said, or you would feel like be made to feel like you are less than because you were gay. And you know, a sissy and punk, all those, all those terms were used as to degrade someone. So you don't wanna be called no sissy or no punk or whatever, you know what I mean? So those are the things I would hear, you know, around the house or whatever, not only within my family, but even people around us, you know? So I was just scared. I was so scared to be me. You know, my grandparents, like I would bring some friends home and my grandmother would be like, Baby, she had a gaydar on her, a gaydar. She would be like, that boy is gay. Like if I brought a friend home from school, from high school, like in between games, cause I was in a band. So my grandma would literally say it and be like, he's gay or whatever. And my grandma would turn her nose up. She wouldn't want to have nothing to do with them, you know? And I'd be like, no, they're not. You know, I would take off. She had a gaydar, baby, cause she was, she was right. She was right, but, and she probably saw it in me. And that's probably why she didn't want me around them or whatever, but yeah. So being gay just was not a, a good thing growing up in Pensacola, Florida. And I just wish that, I do wish that my family was more open, you know, more educated about it because you know, growing up in the church, you know, um, sorry, somebody's calling. Growing up in the church, they, they preach about, they harp on that so heavily. So that's why I don't go to church now, because it's like, everywhere I go, it's like that subject normally comes up and it's just that I don't agree with what they're preaching. But anyway, that's another subject for another day, like I said before. Um, but yeah, so even into, I went off to college, I went to FAMU and it was like, I'm free, you know? So that's when I really started exploring my sexuality, you know, figuring out what men did and stuff along those lines. But, um, when I told my mom, it was one day, like my mom, I was on the phone with her and she was like, when was I gonna start bringing uh, a young lady home or whatever? And 
I was just like, okay, I'm tired. I want to tell her. I think I was like 21, 20, something like that. And I told my mom, me and my mom was like this. You know, I felt like, you know, I was a mama's boy. And my mom went off on me. I was like, mom, I'm gay or whatever. And she was like, she said some words. I prefer not to share any of that, but just know that it broke my heart. And it still hurts to today, you feel me? So I know that it's a pain that um, it doesn't go away. Even though we're in a better place now, like I didn't talk to any of after that because my mom kind of told the entire family. So um, I was embarrassed, I was hurt. Like I didn't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Because you need your parents. Your parents are supposed to be there to guide you, to help you through things, you feel me? And um, to figure things out. And I didn't have that. My mom, it hurt. And it still does, you know, because I still, luckily I, I, I was, let me back up a little bit. Even though I went through that, I was blessed with uh, an extended family. My cousin Boo, Peaches, Carmen, their entire family basically took me in. They took me in under their wing. They called me their brother, cousin, nephew, you know, took me in. It was because of them that I got through it. Like I had that support system because my, and I can't say that all of my family, you know, kind of this, I don't know if disowned is the right word because I kind of like withdrew. And one day, like maybe a year later, I called home and my mom answered the phone. I was calling my grandmother. May she rest in peace. I was calling her and my mom answered the phone and that hurt had turned into like, more of anger and I was like you know I was very nonchalant like can I speak to mama mama being that's what we call my grandmother um and she was like boy you know who this is I was like yes and you put mama on the phone and um I think she started crying or something but since that day we have been talking again but it's still not the same. Even with going home, it's like, cause you can't be yourself. You can't truly be yourself. So like going home to Pensacola, Florida, it's like I go back to that 17 year old that left to go to college at FAMU. I go back to that. These are things that I just notice how I feel when I go back. I go back to that 17 year old because that's who they know. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know the suicide attempts. They don't know the struggle it took to get to where I am today. They don't know because I can't talk about it. Do I want to? Yes. Like all my cousins are like married and they know about all the relationship problems. You know, I don't want my family to know all my business and that's not what I'm saying. But if I get with a partner and I want to take them home, I don't feel comfortable doing that. My mom would probably be like, don't bring that boy to my house. But she's told me that before. In one of my relationships, I took my from male friend home with me and my stepdad was welcoming, my brother was welcoming, you know, and my mom called and the first thing she said was, you got that boy in my house? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she was like, I'm not coming home. And she hung up the phone. It's stuff like that, that I remember. Like, I want you to be involved in my life. I want to be accepted just like everybody else. You know what I mean? My brother accepted it. You know, I tried to tell, I was like, I needed to tell him something. 
And he was like, what's up, man? And I was like, I got something to tell you. And uh, he's like, what's up? And I was like, man, I'm okay, blah, blah, blah. He's like, that's all, that's what you wanted to tell me? He was like, man, I don't care, you still my brother, let's go to the mall. <laughs> so it was real cool with him. My dad, my dad, I think he, he offered to take me to counseling. And I was like, dad, it's not gonna work. It was just like you like women, I like a man, a man walking home and drop their pants. It, if they're attractive, I'm probably gonna be, you know, I feel a turned on by it. If a woman do it, you'll be turned on by it. It's just, it's just what it is. It's like, it's not gonna help. But he did, he didn't like really react the way I thought he would. Um, but I do wanna say this. <clears throat> And this is more present day. You know, my grandmother passed away. And like I say, this is just me sharing my truth. I mean, nothing against my family at all. It's my truth and how I feel. I was talking to my mom one day and I tried, I think the, the subject came up about my grandmother Something, somehow we got on my grandmother and she made the statement. Yeah, mama was always so happy. Mama being my grandma. She said, mama was always so happy. She was so glad you didn't bring that gay stuff around her. And that, that hit me in such a deep way. You know, cause I love my grandmother dearly. She's, I love her dearly. And when she said that, I don't even know, how, she said it so casually, I don't even know if she knew how much it hurt me. I'm like, you know what she meant to me. And then you're gonna say, yeah, she was so happy you didn't bring none of that gay stuff around her. I am that gay stuff. You feel what I'm saying? I am that gay stuff. And I feel like that's what my family does. It's like when I go home, I cannot be Trey Presley because they don't want that gay stuff around. And to me, that includes me. That includes my life. That includes my friends, you know? I cannot talk about, I cannot be me without that being, that's a part of me. And I'm sharing all this to say, I'm sharing all this for all of you who may be watching, who may have kids, who may, who may be going through the same things. Cause I still feel it and it hurts. I'm in a better place, but it definitely still hurts. And that's why I don't go home much. They're like, why you always come for a day or two and leave? Because I don't feel comfortable. Y'all say you love me. Y'all say that we come from such a big family and all caring and open arms. But I don't feel that. Being honest, being honest, it's, it's on your terms. It's on their terms. And that's just being 100. We got to do better. We got to do better. Because there's a lot of us that don't make it because of experiences like that. When I took that bottle of pills, I didn't want to die. I wanted love. That's all. Wanted to be loved and wanted to be accepted. And I thank Boo, Uncle Tim, all of y'all, Peaches, Carmen, everybody that was in my life during that period, Trina, we went through some hell.
But that saved me. Because I didn't feel like I had my family. So thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Tampa Park days, baby. <laughs> Tampa, Florida. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Y'all don't got me being emotional on here. Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. But this is me, y'all. We got to do better. We got to do better as black people. I love y'all. Again, thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all got me. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I love y'all. Please like, share, comment. If you have any questions, please ask. Any suggestions, please let me know. And um, let's continue to love on one another, spread good vibes, good energy, and lift one, lift one another up. You never know who you may be touching, who life you may be changing. Because mine was changed. Mine was changed. I love y'all. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah.